Wow. Joining me now, Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher of the great state of Wisconsin, member of the House Intelligence and Armed Services Committees and Iraq War veteran. Thank you for being with me. Uh, what's your reaction to the White House press secretary there? Well, the standard seems to be that if you vote Republican, you're an extremist. But if you are a pro-Hamas protester, you're just a social justice warrior in service of a noble cause. This is very dangerous. And I do think increasingly we're going to see members of the far left, or I should just say the Democratic base, try to pressure the Biden administration into reducing its support for Israel. And it's important for us to understand that while Israel may be our closest ally in the Middle East, Hamas has allies here, here in America, and they seem to be concentrated on college campuses. The same campuses who deny conservative speakers are organizing pro-terrorist movements. And the faculty members who lecture us about safe spaces and profess to be our moral superiors are encouraging it. And here's the tragedy of all of this, Harris. For decades, we've subsidized this behavior. We've paid colleges to propagandize our children against our values. And we've allowed this social justice woke virus to incubate and now it's spilling over into the rest of society. So how do we stop it? Well, I think at a minimum, college leaders, university presidents should speak out in defense of their Jewish students. They cannot allow this form of anti-Semitism to take hold. At a federal level, we should be taking common sense steps to expose the hypocrisy. So for example, the same university faculty and students who are talking about Israel as a colonizer have no qualms about their universities investing in China, for example. The dichotomy of the oppressor and oppressed does not extend to the victims of far left regimes like the Chinese Communist Party, which is why you don't see any of these self-styled campus radicals marching for Uyghurs uh, who are subject to a genocide right now in China or talking about the CCP's yes. ongoing genocide. That, that is really important to point out. The Muslims in China, the Uyghurs, who we know are tortured, the women are raped so that they are forced to have the babies outside of their own belief system and race to make, to make them right. succumb, to be different. And the men are forced, from what I've read, to, to watch that happen. Uh, I, I want to give you a last word on that, and then we have some breaking news to bring in that I want your reaction to as well. Well, it's horrific. And um, listen, my, my daughters are only three and one. So thankfully, I don't have to think about college for a long time now. But I think a lot of parents would be asking themselves why they're paying 20, 30, 50, 60 grand a year uh, hmm. for something like this. And it dilutes from the mission of higher education. And I say this sincerely. We need our colleges to be the best in the world. We need that to compete against the Chinese Communist Party. But this yes. is not evidence that that's true. Yes. And, you know, we're going to compile a list of those who are condemning it. But you talk about those faculty members, those administrators. Some of them are signing on, like at Yale, 100 professors signing on to support students who support Hamas killers, the terrorists who went after citizens in Israel on October 7th. Um, we need some brave. Are there any brave faculty among them at these elite colleges would be my question. Let's get to this. Yes. New York Governor uh, Kathy Hochul just spoke moments ago addressing anti-Semitism in the state of New York and on the streets and on campuses. Let's watch. This is just coming in for the first time. We will take on the anti-Semitism we have seen on college campuses. The problem didn't begin with the weeks following October 7th attacks. It's been growing on a number of campuses and seen most acutely in the City University of New York. See, let's bring back now Congressman uh, Mike Gallagher. Tell me about what's happening on, on Capitol Hill, because with this particular hearing, what is the goal here? Well, uh, I think the goal is to ensure that our homeland in particular is safe from a domestic terrorist incident or some of the protests that we've seen around the country don't stumble mm -hmm. Uh, out of control and, and become violent. And I should note, and, I, and in, in the spirit of bipartisanship, I do want to praise some of my Democratic colleagues, like Richie Torres from New York, who's been mm -hmm. very outspoken against the anti-Semitism we've seen. We work together on the Select Committee on China, which I chair. He's also been a defender of, of the Uyghur cause, which we've uh, just mentioned. So I'm not saying that it's, you know, that, that everyone uh, is, is equally to blame here. I just think it's important that we preserve that bipartisan core in support of Israel, 
uh, in defense of our Jewish students here in America, because I can already see the landscape shifting and I can see these attempts to isolate Israel on the world stage um, and, and potentially blame Israel for what's happening. Um, and that's something we just need to be on guard against. And what's going to happen this week in Congress is we're going to consider an aid package for Israel that I very much hope will pass. Oh, let's pause there for just a second, because what the president wants to do is roll that in with money from Ukraine and, and with some of the pushback that that will no doubt get, you know, the specificity of what the money is going to do in Ukraine, that sort of thing has been something that Republicans have wanted. That's what you've said you wanted. So to separate that out is important so that Israel can get funding right away. I would think aid right away. Well, tell me about that process. Here's what makes sense to me. Uh, you basically have your most urgent national security crisis, which is the situation in Israel, and then your most uh, important national security threat, which is China, which is why I think we can pursue one track, which is immediate aid for Israel mm -hmm. and then a defense appropriations bill, because what are we supplementing right now if we haven't actually passed the defense bill? We have to do that first. That's the most important thing, right. combined with enhanced support for Taiwan to prevent a crisis there, and then a separate track linking Ukraine to border security. That, to me, is the common sense compromise that both parties should be forced to consider. All right, I'll bring you back another day so we can get into to, uh, what is going on with, with Taiwan and China, uh, because I really want to go down that road. Where the president was on September 11th was Vietnam. So he is looking at the landscape there, and with weakness on foreign policy, maybe he should be. Just a quick thought on that, and we'll move forward. Well, in Vietnam, he said something very troubling. He said because China has economic problems, he doesn't think they're going to invade Taiwan. The evidence for that is mixed at best. And in fact, the opposite could be true. The more domestic turmoil Xi Jinping confronts, the more aggressive he could get externally hmm. in part to distract from that. So we cannot let our guard round and we're simply not moving fast enough to enhance deterrence across the Taiwan Water Strait. Wow. That's a lot of shipping lane traffic, too. I mean, that disrupts the entire world. OK, let's move to this. House Republicans have introduced introduced a bill that would give more than 14 billion dollars in aid to Israel. We were just speaking about this. Some of that money coming from funding dedicated to really ramping up. The new speaker knows perfectly well that if you want to help Israel, you can't propose legislation that is full of poison pills. This House GOP proposal is clearly designed to divide Congress on a partisan basis. And what's your reaction to that? They're saying that you're, you're building poison pills into the plan. It's not a poison pill. It has to be paid for. And for the Democrats who just wasted trillions of dollars on progressive pet projects domestically, to say that we can't find 10 to 14 billion dollars from the Inflation Reduction Act is absurd. It's not responsible. And in everything we do, we have to balance the exigencies of the geopolitical moment, i.e. responding to crises where they emerge with our long term duty to be fiscally responsible and not pass on a mountain of debt to the next generation. I think the speaker is trying to balance those things in good faith right now. We, I guess we can argue about what the specific pay for should be. But the mm -hmm. political move is what the White House did, which is to lump all this together in a package of over $100 billion in hope that on Christmas Eve this year, we're going to pass a 5,000 page bill that nobody reads that includes a supplemental and all these omnibus bills. That's not the way it should work. That's not how you do oversight. That's not how you legislate responsibly. That's not actually how you help Israel in the short term. This needs to be targeted. Well, that's it needs true. to be coherent and needs to be paid for. Yeah, but you know that that's the play on the left, though. I mean, former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi taught everybody that. You're going to pass it, and then you can read it and find out what's in the bill. <laughs> Remember that with health care? Yeah, enormous. It was, it was a lot of pages, too. Uh, Congressman Gallagher, thank you for being with me.